to Kyoto, Kyoto Japan. Japan. As you already know, we went to Japan, and as a part of our adventure, we went to Kyoto. Kyoto at one time was the capital of Japan. It's about 280 miles southwest of Tokyo, and it's known for all of these amazing temples and gardens that we got to visit a few of. It was an amazingly beautiful day getting to visit some very, very old and special spots. And because of that, as well as just the cultural norms in Japan and wanting to be respectful of others visiting these very special places, that's why we're sitting here and we filmed things a little bit differently and, and tried to do our best to be very quiet and respectful uh, while we were there. But we're excited to share that day with you. So let's take it back to Kyoto. Yeah, let's go. We start our day by taking the train from Universal to Kyoto Station, and the trains, the public transportation in Japan, are so easy to use. I just Googled uh, how to get there, and Google gave me all of the directions on what train to take, when it was departing, how many stops to take, and it's so easy to navigate, so we were very easily able to get to where we were heading that day. So then Google told us how to get there. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Google. All told, it was really easy to navigate because the signage was in English as well as Japanese, but a couple of courtesy rules. One, no talking on your phones. Two, get on those trains fast. They're not going to hang around long and it's courteous to the members who are already there. And three, there are actually sections in the trains designated for those who are older and pregnant women. So if you don't fit either of those categories, don't sit in those spots. I also found that it was really interesting that they had women only cars for women only. I don't know why, but I was delighted by this little barricade and the noise it would make and how it would lift when the train was there. So at this point, we were transferring hotels from our hotel at Universal the night before to we we're going to end up in Tokyo this night. So we had all of our luggage with us and we took it to Kyoto Station where they do have lockers you can check things in, but oversized bags like what we had, you need to go to a luggage room, which was actually very convenient and easy to use. Uh, it was a couple dollars each bag and they were able to hold everything there for us until 8 p.m. that night. They can hold it overnight as well, um, but this was just a really great service and all of the major stations that we went to had this check-in service. And after dropping our luggage, we made the first and most important stop of the day. Snacks. The snack situation, endless. This is a convenience store. They call them convenience and there's literally bounties. Bounties. Also, these are all hot coffees, which I find fascinating. This thing is hot. I picked up a strawberry and butter Japanese version of an Uncrustable and it was delightful. Max and I got a little Japanese Lunchable. Tasty. Cheese and meat. Mmm. Cheese and meat. I'm a fan. We weren't sure if this was cheese or butter on bread. So we're going to find out once we figure out how to open it. Nailed it. Or is this just butter for bread? This is just butter. It's oh, just butter. Bread. We just bought a box of butter. <laughs> <laughs> sure did. Sure did. And Yum. didn't even buy bread. Guys, you very know, smart. You know what? It's all good. We're figuring things out. We are. This will go in the bag. Our first major site of the day was the Fushimi Inari Shrine. This is located at the base of a mountain, also called Inari, and it's known colloquially as the 10,000 Tori Gates. Uh, this is a Shinto shrine that a lot of people know of as this path of all of these beautiful Tori gates that you get to walk through. Now, while I had been to some of the other places that we visited in Kyoto, this is a new experience for me. I'm so glad we went. It was a little bit off the beaten path for the other places we were going this day, but totally worth the trip out. Absolutely stunning. Max just told me this was built in 794, not 17, seven. And my brain literally cannot comprehend how old that is. The shrine is about a thousand years older than the whole of the United States. My brain doesn't comprehend these things. <laughs> yeah, it's the uh, an early period of Japanese history, so not exactly sure the year, but around 800. You know what I really don't understand is how they built it, like without modern machinery. Like, how did they get up so tall? It's, it's gotta be it. I have also read that this 
temple is dedicated to Inari, who is the Shinto god of rice, um, and that a fox was believed to be his messenger. So there are lots of fox statues around. The shrine itself was absolutely gorgeous. It was incredibly ornate and detailed in how it was built. And the fact that this construction site had been there for centuries and still exists today is it's difficult to wrap my mind around and all of the detail throughout from the Tory gates that extend up the mountainside to the small details of the foxes that you find not only in the statues but located in the architecture throughout is just beautiful and the site itself all those different individual sections having different uses and all being so ornate it's it's awe-inspiring and you feel you can't help but feel a bit of reverence when you're on the site. Also, we were really lucky because there was some kind of ceremony going on in the temple. We weren't actually allowed in the temple or able to film inside, but we could see it. But we were allowed to film and watch the musicians who were playing this ceremonial music that it's hard not to imagine people playing these same music for decades and decades here. And it's just, it's hard to put into words what it feels like to be in places like this. We have bought this small Tory gate and you can write your prayer or wish on it. So Alan is doing a fantastic job. And then you hang it on the gate and your prayer goes out into the universe. We also got one of these Tory gates and inscribed some uh, wishes on it for Mammoth Club and on the back three of us. Uh, here it is a loose translation to Company Good Fortune. And here is a translation to uh, wishing for good health. So now we will hang it here on this fence and have the fox carry our message on. The next thing we are going to do is shake the omikuji. This is going to get a stick out of it, which we will then give to find out what um, prayer we receive. So, or what wish we receive. So Molly. You shake the omikuji. You're gonna shake it and then you're gonna turn it upside down and uh, you're gonna turn it upside down and the sticks gonna come out of that. Okay. Shake it for a long time? Just shake it up so that they randomize. Okay. Shake it up. Turn it all the way over. There you go. Now hold on to that. 32. All right, cool. So you know your number, 32. 32. All right. My number is 15. Five. Five. Now we're gonna go take those and find out what uh, gift or wish we receive. We all have our fortunes, but they're obviously in Japanese, so to Google Translate. I had number 15, which uh, with the help of some translation, um, to paraphrase, it appears to say something like, um, wishing for peace in my world and that uh, loss of enthusiasm for my work could be a sign of danger to come and uh, a hope for me picking the right path, which right now in Kyoto, Japan, I feel quite enthusiastic about my work. <laughs> I had number five, uh, which again, translated and paraphrasing, um, said that when things look bad, give it time, take a rest, and it might actually turn out to be a blessing. Mine had some beautiful symbolism about a lamp and a mountain, but at the end uh, it said, this is simply a symbol to um, care and respect all of those around you. And then a little bit further on, it said, don't give up and you will continue to find happiness. And I gotta agree with Max that uh, here in Kyoto, Japan, thousands and thousands of miles away and a place I've always dreamed of coming, there's some happiness. Now the main attraction of this shrine are the Tori Gates, and there are said to be roughly 10,000 going all the way up the mountain. All of these Tori Gates were donated, and Tori Gates often mark a transition between the mundane to the sacred. 
um, and are where Kami, or the divine spirits, can pass through at these shrines. The hike up the mountain, if you wanted to get all the way to the top, would take a couple of hours. You are welcome to go as far as you like and then turn around and come back down whenever you please. We chose to go up a little way, check out another kind of shrine spot, and then come back down. When we reached that second section of the shrine, there were a couple of vendor locations as well as some spots for prayer. Please note that if you would like to participate in any of these practices, like the Omikuji or the Fortune Slips or the Omokara Ishi, which is the light or heavy rock like we're about to do, it's important that you have some coin on you to donate. Usually that's about 100 yen. <laughs> We just went to the Amokaro stone, which uh, you make a wish and then you pick up the rock in front of you. And if it is lighter than you expected, your wish will come true. If it was heavier, then unfortunately your wish will not come true. Lighter or heavier. It was definitely lighter than I expected. Significantly lighter than I expected. Me too. So I guess our wishes are coming true. I just learned that if we want to tie our fortunes here, it will make sure that any of the bad messages stay behind and the good messages are carried on to the spirits. So I think we should tie our fortunes. There are sort of two beautiful moments at this shrine. One is when you're walking through the gates and it's just surrounded by red under all of these different tori, but then getting to see it from the outside and seeing the gates go up the mountain in all of this forest gives it a whole different look that's equally stunning. And to commemorate our beautiful morning spent, I bought a little fox to take home. I thought that was such an interesting tale of the fox being the messenger, and I just really loved this experience here. I thought it was so beautiful, so I took this one home. Alan, are you using a vending machine? I am. I just want this. <laughs> what did you get? I got the peach water. The peach water. I got a lot of coins now, my little guy. <laughs> yeah, you do. I'm always using that coin purse from the 1980s. AKA yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yesterday. I also have this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the guy. <laughs> this is good. You don't like peach, do you? I try it. Do you like peach? I like peach. You try it. I expected it to be bubbly. It is not. Nope, it is still peach water. It's good. You're all filming you, filming me, filming you, filming me. Oh. Ooh, that's good. Yeah. Are you done with this? Filmception. Yes, I'm done with that. One thing that is interesting is that there's not a lot of trash cans in Japan because people are polite and they take their trash with them until they find a trash can. But I found a trash can. After a quick train ride to Kiyomizu Gojo, a train station that would put us closer to where we were going to head for the afternoon, we were ready to see other temples. But first, watch. We're on a food-related adventure right now. What are we finding? I don't know how to say it. Okonomiyaki. Okonomiyaki. It's like pancakes, but they're savory pancakes with different toppings. And so we just put it into Google, and now we're on an adventure. Walking the streets of Kyoto. It's very beautiful. Navigator Allen's on the case. We're just following in his 
barge steps. Really trust. Putting a lot of trust. In we it. are putting a lot of trust in that one. Hope you can follow good laps. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't gonna be me. <laughs> we did it. The restaurant that we found was a small, seemingly mom and pop shop run by an older woman and her daughter, and it was incredible. It was so sweet. Every table had a little griddle in it to keep your food warm, and we got to watch uh, this older woman make okonomiyaki for us and noodles, and it was amazing. Now this region is known for okonomiyaki, which is a teppanyaki savory pancake dish that typically comes with wheat flour and some meat inside. I got mine because I couldn't decide. With squid, shrimp, and pork, it was incredibly savory, very delicious, hearty, hearty meal, and it was very clearly delineated between the squid, mm -hmm. the shrimp, and the pork inside the pancake itself. My favorite was, surprisingly enough, probably the shrimp followed by the pork and the squid. All of them were delicious and had a very unique taste, um, but just very fresh, unique, and hearty. I also ordered some of the ginger noodles, and these were some of the best noodles I've ever had. Just like the omonokiyaki, she made it over in the kitchen area and then brought it to our griddle to keep it warm. They were so gingery, the vegetables were all fresh. These were one of my favorite things I ate in all of Japan. I also ordered the okonomiyaki, but instead of getting the variety pack, I went hard on pork. Um, I'm not a big seafood guy, so this was better. I just love that we didn't exactly have a set idea of which restaurant we wanted to go to. We just typed in the cuisine we wanted to try and then we're able to find this local spot. After a delicious okonomiyaki lunch, we have found ourselves at the Yasaka Pagoda. Now, this is a pretty uh, heavily tourist visited location, but it is awesome. This is a five story tall pagoda and it is the last remaining structure of the Hokanji Temple, which was a sixth century temple complex. Based on a little bit of reading, it was actually reconstructed in 1408 and has been reconstructed several times, but that was the last no most notable one. It's stunning. Unbelievable. Also, I know you think we just went to Epcot, but we're really in Japan. However, much like the pagoda in Epcot, when you look at a boot, this pagoda that has five levels, each different level meet, represents one of the different elements. So you've got earth, water, fire, wind, and sky at the top. Also, we found these very... Um, unusual art pieces on the wall and in order to capture them on film i had to pay a frog 100 yen but it was worth it, it says 100 on it 100 to noise the to the frog Wait. thanks frog many of these streets are aligned with little restaurants and shops and we found a very cool store that had vintage vinyl records and dishes and listened to japanese country music the owner of the shop was so cute and he had a sign that said like, please play the music. It's to be listened to. You didn't need to buy anything. He just wanted the vibes. And I was here for the vibes of Japanese country music. And then I saw something that stopped me in my tracks. Meat sticks. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, a Wagyu steak meat stick is delicious. The steak is so tender and buttery and it melts right in your mouth. It was Fantastic. I also couldn't resist ordering the Wagyu burger where the bun was made out of rice cakes and then it had cheese and then it had Wagyu and then it had like crispy Wagyu also. I, it was so melty, so gooey, so delicious, so meaty. I just, I'm gonna think about it for a long time and I'm, I'm thinking about the fact that Wagyu is just street food in Japan. <laughs> tour guide Alan taking us on a tour. After our time at the Yasaka Pagoda, appointed navigator Alan walked up a winding mountain street to Kiyomisudera Temple. Even though it was very, very busy and crowded, uh, I guess it was lucky that I went first because I was very tall and we didn't get lost or separated. Our next major milestone was Kiyomisudera, which roughly translates to Pure Water Monastery, named after the fountain that you're going to see in just a little bit within. This is a Buddhist temple, unlike the Shinto temple that we just visited. And fun fact about Kiyomizudera, there's not a single nail in the entire construction. What? Stop, stop. Mm -hmm. My brain can't comprehend it. Once again, it's really hard to put into words how beautiful these places are, especially because it was golden hour when we were here. And it was like, you had the mountains, you had the pagoda, you had the temple, the forest. Like, it's just so stunningly beautiful, I will never forget it. 
we made a small donation to go inside this temple and we were actually given uh, these very small and ornate beautiful bookmarks which I still have as well. Another really cool feature of Kiyomi Musidera is Binke's iron sticks and clogs which are said to be the training implements of a samurai. They're very heavy and there was a line to attempt to try to pick up these iron weights and clogs that sort of increased in weight. It was very, one, very small, easy to pick up. Another, larger, also easy to pick up. And the third was a very large stick. Now it should be noted, before I get into whether or not I actually picked up this stick, that they're all in a cage and they're very far away from you. So you can't like get in with your elbows bent, your arms are sort of wide, you're sort of in the red zone out here. And um, it was a struggle and it did budge. No, I can't get a grip. <laughs> okay, Alan just told me that there is a legend that if you jump off where Molly is and make it all the way to the bottom and live, then your wish comes true. I can see why it's outlawed. <laughs> 85% success rate though. Okay, that's a 15% failure rate. That's a 15% failure rate. I mean, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. So these down here are the Otowa Waterfall. There are three different fonts. Each one, if you drink it, grants you a successful thing. One is longevity. Another is success in school. And the third is a fruitful love life. However, it is said that drinking from all three is considered greedy and shouldn't be done. Okay, so listen, when we get up there, okay. there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a thing you gotta do okay. with the water, all right? Yeah, yeah. We're gonna get these cups that are on these poles, okay? Mm -hmm. And you need to fill it. Of course, we wanna pick the one that we want. So for us on our left, Alan has told me that on our left will be, well, as we look at it right now, the right. Left is school success, yep. middle is love life success, and right is longevity. So, you know, flip that and reverse it for us when we get up there. Yeah. All right, Missy Elliott, I'm going to go with longevity. Alan? Longevity. Now, we know getting three is greedy, but I think getting two is okay. Yes. I also want longevity, but, you know, a little help in the love life wouldn't hurt either. Um, so, you're going to get your, your pole with the cup on it, okay? Then you're going to fill the cup with your uh, desired water. You're then going to pour a little bit of the water on uh, one of your hands. Then switch hands, pour the water on the other hand. Then take some water in that hand and drink it. And then you're going to raise the pole and allow the water that is remaining in the cup to run down the pole itself onto your fingers, the ones that are touching the pole, and then you're gonna put it back. How do you feel about that? Get the pole. Yeah. Put some in this hand. Uh-huh. In this hand. Yep. Drink, Drink out of this hand. Yep. And then raise the pole. Yep, let it run down. After a beautiful time exploring the temple, it was time to head back down to the street and, of course, eat some more. We had our eye on some street food. We first picked up a spicy pork bun 
that was incredibly delectable, hot, I mean piping hot, spicy and very hearty. It has to be one of the top two street foods I had in Japan. We also got strawberry candy, which I'd been dreaming about for months once I saw it on Instagram. It's big fresh strawberries that have been candied and they were incredible. They were juicy and crunchy and like, oh my gosh, amazing. Then it was time to head back to Kyoto Station to grab our luggage and prepare to board the bullet train or Shinkansen to head to Tokyo. We are preparing to take the bullet train back to Tokyo from Kyoto and on the way we need some food. Now, a very normal thing to do if you're taking the Shinkansen is to grab a bento box. Uh, this is going to be a meal that you can eat on the train. It's usually cold, but it's, it comes in a variety of items. For instance, this whole section is sushi. But as I around the corner, we have uh, pork loin cutlets right here. We've got uh, karage or fried chicken. There's uh, grilled beef ribs over rice. There's all types of options and it's super handy. You get a meal, you get some rice, some meat. There's certainly veggie options. And then you take it on the train with you and you eat on the way. We're also at Convini to get some drinks and snacks to bring on the train along with our bento boxes. Coffee. I don't know if I need coffee it's this late. Coffee. That's hot. But we are gonna pick up some. They have delicious bubble water here in Japan and maybe a brewski or two. Cool. You can find all kinds of things at Konvini, including like to-go meals. They do little rice balls. They've got all kinds of chips and snacks and sweets and drinks. I've been trying new chips at Konvini every time and I can't read it obviously, so I just kind of guess what the flavor is. I picked up this one and it has cheeses on it, so I think it's cheese flavor. I got this one yesterday. It was prawn, but it was actually not too bad. Look at these. Did you find infinite shrimp on your first one? Infinite shrimp bat? No, there's a bag with an anime girl that says infinite shrimp. I didn't find infinite shrimp, but I did find this that has a cheese icon on it, which makes me think I got cheese flavored. Ooh chips this time. You didn't buy the Super Mario ones? I didn't buy Chip Star, no. What did you get? What did you pick from So Kavini? far I've gotten th this waffle item. Yum. And then sour gummies. I like that. And here's one of the most amazing things about Japan in my opinion. Imagine you were at the airport, right? So we're at the train station. So imagine you're somewhere that's commercial and, and people are busy. We got this bag of chips, four different alcoholic drinks. We got some candy treats and a water. This was less than nine US dollars. Yep. What? Mine. I got the stuff. sours and these guys and our little bonbons and two bevies. One is Coke Zero, nothing exciting. And two, Pocari Sweat. Um, and this was like four bucks. Unbelievable. We have made it to our platform in Kyoto and are ready to board the Shinkansen or bullet train back to Tokyo. now. The Shinkansen is a specialty ticketed train. We've been using a, a train card that's on our Apple wallet all throughout all of our local trains around Tokyo, Kyoto, and Osaka. But if you wanna take a long trip, you will need to board the Shinkansen and that will require a specialty ticket. Um, now this bullet train is named that partially because of its speed. Most of the bullet trains around Japan operating at about 186 miles an hour, although some of them crest 200. How do you feel about that? I, that stresses me out. <laughs> it stresses me out looking at them. Being on it, I'm fine. But when they zoom by, I'm very stressed. This trip uh, originating from Osaka Going to Tokyo is about two and a half hours. For us, it'll be about two hours and 15 minutes from Kyoto, and we'll be back in Tokyo. Another thing to note when booking your Shinkansen tickets is that if you have bigger luggage like we do, we've got all of our suitcases, you need to reserve a special seat that has luggage space. Otherwise, it's like an airplane where there's some overhead compartment space. Also, you can bring whatever snacks and food you'd like, which I really enjoy about the train. There's also Wi-Fi bathrooms. There's a track snack cart that comes through like Harry Potter. It's quite magical. However, do know that um, these trains leave on time. So um, they have a little bit of time to get on board once the train arrives in the station, but don't linger. It is not like getting on a flight. You need to get yourself on the train because it's going to leave when it says it's going to leave. If you're running late, that's your problem. <laughs> Dr. Strange here loves that it leaves on time. Honestly, bring that to the US. If you're late, I'm sorry, you're just not getting up. Be early, be on time. 
This is hard for me as a person that's continuously late. I'm glad <laughs> these two are keeping me on track. <laughs> what do you got? Which is fried chicken, some rice, and I believe this is sauce. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's not bad. It's still crispy. We're going so fast, my chairs are hot. I've picked up a lemon spiked sake seltzer, and I have to tell you. I am a fan. I've had one sip and I'm very much enjoying it. Oh, just saw the percentage. Well, anyway, it's very tasty. I also picked up a little bevy that's, I'm believing to also be a sake cocktail. Suntory is a whiskey brand as well. I've enjoyed their other canned beverages. They have a highball that's fantastic for a can. But let's try this one. For reference, when I go into Konvini, I just pick cans at random. It's definitely not as strong as the highball. Tastes like lemon. Not super sake flavored though. I like it. Pretty good for a canned bevy. We got a new snack. Look at all the different flavors. Cola. Is that real? Rame. 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 Melon maybe? Lemon? I don't know. Oh, they're cute. This is the Mozambi Super Express bound to <laughs> Tokyo. Mm. Mm. We'll be stopping at oh, it's definitely lemon, by the way. And Shinagawa Station ramen in. before arriving at Tokyo Terminal. I think that one. Smoking is not allowed on this train, except in the designated Any suspicious light. It's not my favorite flavor. I've learned ramune, not my favorite thing. It's a very popular soda flavor here. We've had ramune flavor things, not for me. But you know what it is for me? Chocolate covered macadamia nut. Delicious. Now. Speaking of chocolate things, this is bread with chocolate in it. From Chef Bourbon. From Chef Bourbon. Is it good? Interesting to put it in bread. We would not do that, I don't think, in the States. Um, it's cool. We have opened up the cheese snack, but I was expecting chips. Mm. I really like Cheetos. Uh, the puffy Cheetos. We made it to Tokyo and then had to navigate our way to our hotel in Shibuya, one of the busiest wards in Tokyo. We stayed at the Hotel Indigo, which is a hotel chain we have domestic experience with, so we felt good that we would have a good experience there as well, and we absolutely did. It was about $400 a night, but it was an amazing location, very walkable to a lot of restaurants, entertainment, incredibly convenient for the train station, and as a little cherry on top, it had an amazing view of the Shibuya Scramble, which we'll talk more about that in another video. You got some jazz albums. Hey, that's perfect for me. I'm this. This is a very interesting wall decoration. A little coffee setup here. A little bathroom setup right here, a little sink action. And I assume in here is shower. And of course, the throne. <laughs> Alan and I are gonna go find our room now. It's been a lovely day of adventures in Kyoto, but now we go to bed, because tomorrow we explore in Tokyo. You're leaving me? Yeah, for the first time. What, what? I know, it'll be very hard. I to... thought we were all in this bed. <laughs> We've gone from the two twins in a trundle to just straight to the one giant I, I thought we just were, yeah, what? I know. It'll be weird. This is brand new information. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Say bye. Bye bye. And that was our day in Kyoto. So it was a beautiful day. Uh, let's all say our favorite part of the day. Okay. Um, I think this is an easy one for me. Fushimi and Ari was beautiful. And mostly it tops my list because I had already been to Kimi Zidera. I had been to Yasaka Pagoda before. I had visited Kyoto a little bit, but this was brand new and unbelievably gorgeous.
I think for me it has to be a Q Mizudera. It was just so neat, and as both Molly and Max know, I sort of go down a deep dive when I get interested in a new subject, so it was all about temples and shrines, and learning about Kimi Zadera and specifically the lore around the stage was wild, but it was also just so beautiful. Do you think we could survive if we made that joke? Absolutely not, no. Probably about 85% of the time. And it's a 15% yeah. death rate. Do you think that the 15, I'm sorry, do you think the 85% get injured? Yes. You're yes, jump, I do. You're jumping so far. Do you think they, like, lose limbs? Probably. Like, the ability to use limbs? Uh, possibly. It was outlawed, Molly. I'm not saying I want to do it. I'm just saying. 85 She's thinking about it. I'm just saying 85% all my wishes come true. It's not a bad, bad ratio. We're not jumping. We didn't jump. I think for me, this was our first day outside of, like, theme park and pop culture experiences because we went to Tokyo Disney first for a few days and then we did the Harry Potter experience and then we did Universal and so this is our first day like in Japan not in a theme park type setting and it was such a switch yeah. but it was so beautiful like this is my first time being in Japan and just the history and the heritage and the ornate buildings and all the detail and knowing that they didn't even use nails to build these places and just to actually be in Japan outside of kind of the like you know magical bubble of being in a theme park it just was it was beautiful I will never forget the view standing at the top of, of those places and just it feels special when you're there I don't I can't describe it just being there feels special yeah. there's a there's a little bit of like a reverence associated with all of those sites and also the food is delicious. True. Meat sticks, also very high on my list, always. Well, we hope you had fun following along on our day in Kyoto. We wanted to spend some time outside of the theme park experiences and bring you all with us. So we know this was a little bit different than some of the other videos that we've done, especially in Japan, but hopefully you enjoyed it. In the meantime, friends, be sure to like this video, subscribe if you are new, follow us on all of our socials, and if you want to join in the conversation about this video or any of our other videos, join us on Discord. The links are all down below. We've got a few more Japan videos coming your way, so look forward to those as well. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly. I'm Alan. And I'm Max. And it has been so magical. Bye! Remember when you just bought butter? Bread? It was oh. just in my bag bag. Oh, <laughs> just in case you need a snack. The butter butler. <laughs> just some butter.